please tell me a bit about the 2011 survey of challenges for foreign businesses in China? What are your findings? What have you found out about the participants? What are their concerns, their issues? Hello, Chairman. I'm happy to share with you uh, the findings of this survey. First of all, I have to say that this is the second year we do it. The first year, which was a little bit like a test yeah, for us, uh, the survey was mostly focused on European companies. This survey of 2011, the new one, we wanted to have it more a wider uh, responses, so we have opened it to any foreigner uh, working doing business in China. Yeah? In total, we have 246 executives answering the survey. Uh, of those, 117 are CEOs or company owners. The rest come from different functions in the organization. Uh, I can tell you something more about the, the sample. Uh, as an average, they have 18 years of work experience, and of those, 7.4 years in China. So they know the China market very well. Exactly. Yeah. Um, also, they also represent 33 different countries. So uh, this was uh, uh, done by a team of uh, professors, um, Professor Per Schenster, myself, Juan Antonio Fernandez, and Robert Ioane, who is a professor in, in a Chinese university here in Shanghai. Um, something more about the sample. Uh, basically, 50% uh, of them come from manufacturing companies, 50% come from service companies. And we have 10 head of, heads of uh, research and development centers. Yeah. Most of them uh, are uh, wholly foreign owned enterprises, 141 in total. 45 are representative offices, and we have 22 joint ventures. So this is basically uh, the, the characteristics or the description of the, of the sample. Okay. So basically, what are the challenges or what are the main concerns being faced by foreign executives working in China based okay. on the results of your survey? Okay. One, one of the questions we ask is how confident they are to have a successful business in China. Uh, we asked this, uh, we call confident index for 2011, and uh, the scale goes from 1, which is the minimum, 10, which is the maximum. As an average, they give us 7.23. We asked the same questions about the future. How confident are you, are, are you, uh, you are about having a successful business in the next five years? Uh, and the index was a little bit higher than the previous one we got 7.71, which means that they are positive. They are even more positive about the future than about the present. Now, interesting thing is that we asked this question to uh, Chinese executives in a, in a twin survey that we did in parallel with this, uh, with this one. We also asked this question about uh, how confident are you about doing good business in, in China, just to Chinese. And the confident index was a little bit lower than the foreigner. For instance, for 2011, the index was very close to 7. And in the next five years, it was even lower, 7.6.7. Uh, Which is interesting that is the foreigners doing business in China are more confident mm -hmm. than the Chinese doing business in China. Yeah. But, but both are positive. Now, another question we ask is about competition. How different or, or harder is competition in China compared to your home country? And 70% of the respondents, 7-0, seven zero. Seven zero, yes, said that China is tougher or much tougher than the home country. So China is not an easy place to work and to do business. But they are here and they are confident. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and the proof of this is that we asked another question. Uh, which uh, percentage of objectives you met for your China operation? Uh, the respondent declared, 64% declared that they have achieved most or all of the objectives they had set for the operation in 2010. And in the past five years, they said that they have achieved something like 58%. But well, again, it's not bad. Yeah? considering that China is not an easy place to be successful. Another question we ask is about the effect, the impact of the crisis on the China operation. 
and uh, around 42% declared that they have achieved the results they expected, and 24% they said that actually they have uh, done better than they expected. So again, the impact of the crisis, according to these uh, numbers, has not been so bad for them. Yeah. So uh, what are the what um, words of wisdom do they have for us in terms of how to be successful in China? It's a tough place to do business. How can you ensure that your chances of doing well are higher? Good question. <laughs> and and, and an, an important question, yeah, because uh, we have the challenges to say, hey, uh, from our own experience, uh, after being in China for so many years, doing business here, what have we learned? Well, what are the things that we consider important to be successful? And, uh, of course, the list can be very long. So we decided to uh, group these questions in three uh, dimensions. One referred to the organization, the other about product services, and finally a group that includes others, that we didn't know where to put them. Yeah? Uh, regarding the organization, the top, uh, the top two factors that they consider critical to be successful is to have the right strategy for China. Uh, so it is part of the experience you get here, doing business here. You have to adapt your strategy. You cannot do in China what you think or what has been uh, successful somewhere else is going to work in China. So adapt your strategy to the conditions of the China market. So adaptability is very important. Very important. And then the second is good management team, uh, to have the right people here. So those two factors at organizational level seems to be critical and makes sense, yeah, of course. Uh, regarding the product and service, they say, they told us that price quality ratio is the top factor and brand. Uh, so this uh, dimension of uh, the, the, the value you are offering, the, the product or service you are offering and the price, and don't forget that China is uh, a tougher market than uh, their home countries, uh, and also to have a strong brand. And finally, the other group, that uh, those things that we didn't know where to put, uh, the top ones that appear in that group was uh, adaptability to local ways, which connects to the strategy, yeah, the first uh, point that we mentioned at the beginning. And guess what? One sheet. <laughs> Connection, yeah. I, I know that uh, we talk a lot about one she and the importance of one she, but I mean, they confirm it. It's critical, and I know one she is important anywhere. Yeah, to have good relationship with the authorities, with your suppliers, with your clients is critical, but it seems more critical here than anywhere else. So, in terms of the major challenges that they face when doing business in China. Could you tell me a bit about those? What do they say? I mean, you said already that they say the competition is really tough here. What are the other factors? Okay. Uh, yeah, we asked those, that question. Say, uh, doing your currently, doing your uh, business in China, managing your operation, what are the, the things that uh, keep you awake at night? <laughs> what are your nightmares? Yes. Um, well, no surprise, the number one is human resources, finding and retaining talented people. And again, if you uh, compare to what uh, the other survey, the survey we did to Chinese organizations, the top one for the Chinese is also human resources. Ah, so HR issues are a challenge across the board. Exactly. That affects everybody that's trying to do uh, manage an operation in China. Yeah? Now, the second one is interesting because they put as the second challenge increasing labor cost. Mm. Uh, and that's a message that we have heard from uh, several years past. Yeah? The, uh, China is becoming a more expensive place to produce and manufacture. It's not so cheap as before. Right, so people are going to Vietnam, Indonesia, some other countries. Uh, exactly, yeah. Uh, well, it's not so easy to dismantle your operation here and your factories and move them to, to China. So there, there is some time that uh, that will require. But I think that the main uh, uh, consequence of that is that uh, companies have to uh, rethink their value change and start doing things that have more value added than just simply assembling things or, or cheap, uh, using cheap labor. Yeah? The third factor connects to another factor that we mentioned before, uh, competition in China. 
Now, what they identify as the strongest competitor or more difficult, uh, challenging competitors in China are Chinese competitors. Chinese are becoming stronger. So here you have a situation in which your labor costs are increasing, are raising. That, for some of them, was the main reason to come to China. Because of the cheap labor. Exactly. Then you have the Chinese are becoming stronger, stronger, stronger competitors. Competitors. So what they are eating, they, at least the lower segment of the markets are controlled by Chinese now. Yeah? Mm. But they are also coming up, <laughs> going to the middle. And soon they will go to the top. Yeah? So you have pressure from both sides. Which means that one of the things that these companies should rethink in their strategy is how they should position themselves in the value chain. Uh. The four factors, again, is another factor that is uh, in many of these surveys is repeated as a problem is unclear, inconsistent regulations. Okay, so here you have the four things. Human resources, increased labor costs, Chinese are becoming stronger, and unclear, in inconsistent and regulations. These are in order of importance. That's right. Okay from top to bottom. Now, in this question of challenges, we got some surprises. For instance, the uh, uh, renminbi appreciation is very low in the, bo uh, the bottom of the list. So they don't think this is a major issue. It they is don't an issue, but not a major issue. Exactly, exactly. Although, of course, if you think of renminbi appreciation, it has certain connection with increased labor costs. Yeah? So it could be their connection there. Uh, another one that surprised us because it was so low in the list, it's almost out of the list, is IPR infringement. Because it's one of the things that you hear people say, complaining constantly, about. Constantly, yes. Constantly. But according to the people that answer this survey, uh, that's not uh, a concern or for them. I, I wouldn't say that it's not a problem. and not that's a major concern. But it's not a major concern. Why? Probably because they already consider this part of the normal landscape of doing <laughs> business in China. Uh, and also because they already have the ways to protect the intellectual property right. Corruption is also another one that is low in the list. Yeah? Corruption is low in the list. Yeah. So, again, appears in the list as one challenge, but not as high as we expected. Yeah? Exactly. Uh, and another interesting point is that some of our respondents uh, mention as a challenge for them, for their operations in China, the difficulty of getting Schengen visas for their Chinese employees. Hmm. Um, and I understand because I also, uh, I, I'm from Europe, I'm European, and I try sometimes to, to help Chinese that want to do business in Europe, and it's, it's a ni nightmare uh, to get visas for them. And I don't say that uh, the uh, Europeans should uh, open their hands, but they should be selective. Hmm. And should, they should identify people that want to do business in Europe, Chinese that want to do business in, in Europe, employees of European multinationals that want to go to Europe. They should have a way to identify these people and allow them to have access to visa uh, in an easier way. Yeah? So now we mentioned that HR was the number one challenge for both sides, for Chinese executives and for foreign executives doing business in China. Could you speak a bit more about the HR issue? Yes. Um, well, I can tell you that uh, uh, as an average, uh, the respondents of our survey declared that they, uh, they had something like 12% turnover in 2012. 12%? Yeah, 2012. That sounds a bit high. Uh, and that's an average. Yeah? It depends on uh, which uh, category you're talking could be different. Uh, and they also declare uh, around a 9% uh, salary increase in 2010. Well, for instance, the HR cost, uh, what they say that the higher increases were mostly at the top of the pyramid. Top management, uh, middle managers, uh, th those are those that get the highest salary increase. Yeah? And, and, and again, uh, in, our, in my experience, uh, talking to many executives, it seems that middle managers is always a, a key factor, a hot factor for many of them, and, and could be a bottleneck to grow in the organization. Yeah? Uh, regarding retention, again, uh, the retention is more difficult in the middle level, middle managers. Yeah? Uh, they declared, uh, the respondents of our survey, 20%, 27% of them said that 
it's very difficult to retain middle managers. Engineers and skilled workers, 30%, they said it's very difficult to retain them. And salespeople, those are the three groups that seems that retention is more, uh, most challenging. Now, uh, we ask them, what are your secrets? Or, or what are those things that you uh, use in your organizations are effective in retaining your people? What are those things? And we identify four. I would think salary would be one of them. Yes, you, uh, <laughs> you know very well. We, you, you don't need to do a survey to, uh, to know that, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I have selected four that are at the top of the list. Yeah? Okay. And I will go in reverse order. From four, three, two, one. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, to keep the has a kind of a, a drum roll at the end. Exactly. So the number four, rewards and recognition. And I think that is universal. It works in China. It works anywhere in the world. You recognize good people. You reward good performance. And that helps to retain those good people. That's clear. No secret. Number three. What you said, you're very clever. Paying above market. Money is important. Uh, when you have a, a good compensation, then you can forget about it. But if you don't have it, you forget about the rest. <laughs> That's the problem, yeah? Number two, career opportunities. To have career uh, paths for your uh, top people. Uh, that they can grow in the organization. They can improve in the organization. Something to aspire to. Exactly. And number one, now you can... Number one, do drum roll. <laughs> <laughs> Developing a feeling of belonging to the organization. Hmm, interesting. Uh, so make them feel that they are part of something important, that they are welcome, uh, that they are respected. That seems to be a critical factor. Now, when you have this feeling in the organization, when they see good career opportunities, when you pay above the market, and you have the right rewards and recognitions, then the problem is that you don't can, cannot get rid of them. <laughs> they it's not retention, but the opposite. <laughs> They're with you for life. Exactly. So you've touched on some key points from your survey of uh, foreign executives doing business in China. If you could give me a brief summary then of your findings. Okay, I would say that uh, we can conclude with five points. First of all, optimism. I wouldn't say that it's a crazy optimism. I would say it's moderate optimism that they, are, they will do good business in this country. That is general from the interview. What is the conclusion? Second point I think is important. Increasing competition from Chinese. They are becoming stronger. They are becoming savvy. They know more and more. And they are improving. So you have to be aware of your Chinese competitors. Third, the, it seems the eternal problem in China, HR continues to be a key challenge, and it's not easy. Yeah. Fourth, the importance of good strategy, one she, and flexibility. Uh, what means that uh, the people you assign to China, I'm talking about expatriates, must have this flexibility. Uh, also, in this case, personality matters. It's not only the technical knowledge, what they know about the organization, the products, is about their personality as well. Which means that the fifth point, the key role of the management team in the success of the operation. And I think those are the key uh, findings yeah, from the survey. Okay, and for people who want to have more information about your survey, more details, is this available on the SEEPS website? Can they download the full document? By all means, and free of charge. <laughs> Professor Fernandez, thank you so much for doing this interview. I look forward to speaking with you again. Uh, we can explore the details of this survey, and also I'm looking forward to hearing about the Chinese executives, what they have to say about doing business in China. My pleasure. Thank you.